Hello world, something I would like to talk about today might seem to many of us, the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a topic that has been a little bit over-talked recently, but still, it is kind of important, let's be honest, and the topic is our Heavenly Mother, our Mother in Heaven. Well, basically what I would like us to do today is to focus again on the on the one that is the heavenly blueprint of motherhood that is the true motherhood in the scriptures the original scriptures of the old testament we learn about god's mercy and about his merciful love to human beings the word that keeps coming back in many ancient scriptures biblical scriptures is Rahum, which means basically mother's womb. And the word Rahum also is present in all the derivatives of it that stand for God's love. God's love is, God's divine love is full of mercy, is full of motherhood. Uh, same thing we can find in Islam, in the Quran, God is called Rahman, that is merciful. Rahman is also a de derivative of the same proto-Semitic word, which stands for mother's womb. By its very nature, divinity, God's nature, is full of motherly love and true motherly respect for the divine children, that is us human beings, and all the creation, all the animals and the nature. The doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, the so-called Mormonism, uh, tells us that in divinity there are these two elements present, um, fatherhood and motherhood. In a way, they are divided. Uh, fatherhood is typical of our Heavenly Father, and motherhood is typically typical of our Heavenly Mother, which seems kind of obvious. But, you know, the point is that Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother are in perfect union, in a union that actually makes it hard for us human beings to tell the difference where are the boundaries between Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father. Only they can be in such a perfect union. Married couples never will. Men will always be men, women will always be women, and it's our handicap as human beings. My Mormon heresy is that we actually have two different genders, men and women, to learn the other gender. Uh, we are not men and women by default. Well, as biological creatures we are, in a way, but as guys, we learn how to be men. As girls, we learn how to be women. And we also have these two genders to learn what is it like and what does it mean to be the other gender. And in a way, marriage is a nice laboratory to start such an experiment, to learn more about what it means to be a mom, what it means to be a dad, what it means to be a father, what it means to be a mother, and finally what it means to be man and what it means to be a woman. And by that, what it, what it means to be children of God. In the middle of the garden there was a tree of life, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters, Pishon, Gihon, Tigris, Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The Lord God caused the man to fall into deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord made the woman from the rib that he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. 
We all know that throughout the ages, religion has become very man-centered. And actually, well, most religions, Christian religions, well, men are priests, men are pastors, and men are in a way privileged. Well, there has also been a movement, a thought that God by nature is neither a man nor, nor a woman, politically correct or not. That's a long story. I don't really want to discuss it right now. Well, anyway, God not being a man, not being a woman, is one of the core elements of the doctrine of, for example, the Roman Catholic Church or Orthodox Church. Still, uh, men are, in a way, privileged, and the masculine element in deity is very much privileged in many religions around the world, including Christianity. The Christian churches glorified man by making them defenders of justice and reason. The woman, meanwhile, was treated as a silly, human-like thing, an immoral being, an emotional, hypersensitive creature. In radical Protestantism, our glorious foremother Eve was depicted as a fallen messenger of Satan, while her companion, Adam, was talked about as a hero who generously partook the forbidden fruit not to alienate himself from his foolish and irresponsible wife. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints gives us a different perspective on the fall of the first humans. Apparently, Eve's transgression, eating the forbidden fruit, was an act of courage, an act that God was anxiously anticipating. Thanks to Eve, the history of humankind had found its beginning. Adam and his wife left the pleasant and naive state of Eden and started a life where individuality and responsibility would have become the most important values. Mormonism shows Eve as an active player in the history of humankind, and by that the doctrine points to Heavenly Mother and, in a way, shows us that there is more to deity than we can imagine, that the feminine element is of importance in religion. By discovering the Heavenly Mother, we learn that human's gender reflects the nature of God and divinity. Christianity has been struggling to find both elements, male and female, in de deity. It's worth noticing that uh, in ancient times there was a Jewish sect in Elephantin, in Egypt, that worshipped both Adonai, the main deity of Judaism, along with his female companion. Well, the point I would like to make here is that there is a natural longing of a human being and that is present in human spirituality to find femininity and the male aspect, both aspects in, in deity, in God. Why is it so? Well, probably because people are struggling to see that God is not very exotic to them, that his nature, their nature, is not something completely alienated from human beings, that God is in a way close to human being, also in nature. The communion of husband and wife reflects the communion of the Father in Heaven and his companion, the Mother in Heaven. The Church, in its hymn, O My Father, expresses the hope of meeting both Father and Mother in Heaven. By creating us in His image and likeness, God expressed His loving desire for us to be like Him. Our earthly life is the beginning of a beautiful adventure of becoming like the Heavenly Parents here and in the afterlife. Our sexuality is not the result of the Creator's capricious decision but it reflects God's wish to exalt the human to deity. Gender, therefore, is divine. But moreover, God wants us, each and every one of us, regardless of whether we are man or women, to be carriers of both, of the masculine and the feminine element. God wants us to explore the presence of masculinity and femininity in the universe and in our own nature to discover them, keep learning about them, and cherish them. By doing that, we move on in exaltation. <laughs>